I lament the fact that this appears to have fallen down on a party line vote pattern, but what I'm going to try to do is shock you back into reality about where we are. Because this is beyond even the subject matter of this amendment. You got to understand, in coming up with this sunset bill, the sunset, members of the Sunset Commission, including Chairman Gonzalez, worked very, very hard on this bill. And they heard from experts, including from the Sunset Commission, who work for this House. And for you to support this amendment, you have to believe a couple things. You have to believe that Chairman Gonzalez and the members of the Sunset Commission didn't do their homework on this amendment, including Ms. Thompson, the bill's author, that they got it wrong on religious liberty. But even more far-fetched members, you have to believe that the members of the Supreme Court, all Republicans, all conservative Republicans, would somehow adopt rules that would infringe on the state constitution and the U.S. Constitution. You'd have to believe that Chief Justice Nathan Hecht, a Republican who's been elected to the court six times, is going to adopt rules in contravention of the Constitution. You would have to believe that Justice Paul Green, a Republican, would adopt rules that are contrary to the U.S. and the state Constitution. You'd have to believe that Phil Johnson would do the same, Justice Don Willett would do the same, Justice Eva Guzman would do the same, Justice Deborah Lerman would do the same, Justice Jeffrey Boyd, Justice Philip Devine, Justice Jeff Brown. You would have to believe that all these people would, would be willing to violate the U.S. Constitution and the state Constitution related to religious liberty. And they would promulgate, and this is the boogeyman that you've been given, some ABA rules. They would adopt ABA rules here in the state of Texas. So you would believe a few members of this body, ladies and gentlemen, this is really about letting them take control of the floor. This is about the membership abdicating its responsibility as members and, and saying we don't believe the members of Sunset. We don't believe the Republicans on the Supreme Court. And instead, we are going to yield our power and we are going to write a bill, a sunset bill, on the House floor and empower the members behind me. I'm a lawyer, members. I took an oath. At the beginning of that oath, it says, I do solemnly swear that I will support the constitutions of the United States and of this state. And when it ends, it says, so help me God. And all of you who are lawyers have taken that same oath. So are you willing to allow just a couple of members here to come rewrite the rules related to the state bar on the House floor? Are you willing to abdicate your role as custodians of state law? And are you willing to believe the fantasy that somehow those members of the Texas Supreme Court, all conservative Republicans, many of whom you have likely supported, you have to believe the fantasy that they are willing to adopt rules in contravention of the U.S. Constitution, specifically the First Amendment and the state constitution. That is what you are saying with your vote if you vote in favor of this amendment. And I do the not think yield. you want to say that, members. Mr. I do Rinaldi. not believe that you want to say that. Mr. And so Rinaldi. I would gladly Mr. yield Rinaldi to for... Chairman Rinaldi. Do you... Um, do you know the difference between unconstitutional as applied and facial unconstitutionality? Yes. I know you do. You're a lawyer. So facial unconstitutionality would deal with the rules that are adopted by the Supreme Court. However, these rules aren't necessarily always going to be applied by the Supreme Court. They're going to be applied by the State Bar of Texas, correct? In disciplinary actions. Is that right? They would be adopted by the Supreme Court, yes. They would be adopted by the Supreme Court, and they will be applied to discipline lawyers by the State Bar of Texas. Correct, so and I've said very clearly, can't. I've said very clearly, Mr. Rinaldi, and I think you, you, you heard me loud and clear, that I do not believe the Texas Supreme Court will ever adopt rules to infringe on religious liberty, and it's certainly not this one. 
Sir, oh, I don't believe this one will either, but okay. however, as applied is the problem, and that's why we need this rule. As applied by the State Bar of Texas in a particular instance, a rule can be interpreted in a way that violates constitutional rights, even though the rule is facially valid as adopted by the Supreme Court. So, Mr. Rinaldi, look. The fantasy that the authors of this amendment would have you believe, first of all, is supported by zero cases. They offer not one case, zero, on this house floor, and we let them get away with that. You walk up here, and you try to create a boogeyman, and you say the ABA rules, be scared of those, but you offer not one case about how anybody's license under the state bar has been abridged by any sincerely held religious beliefs, or in their exercise of any sincere religious belief. And so, you walk up here with no facts, you create a boogeyman, and then you want us to rewrite state law related to the Texas bar, and I say no. I say no, we should not do that. I think so, that's so bad. So are we rewriting I think state that law? Bad because I'm policy. hearing two different arguments. So I want to I want to clarify: Are we rewriting state law? I because I heard before that this is already law under the Constitution. Now I'm hearing two different things. We are writing. Absolutely, we're writing state law. And so, in so fact, this is not by not law. by not accepting the Moody Amendment, we are creating new law here. By not accepting the Moody Amendment, and and I think it's just bad policy. This is really bad policy. And I. And, and I'm just candidly, I'm just tired Mr. Speaker. of hearing people walk Mr. up to Kane, the mic for what purpose? Legitimate yield for a with question no examples and tell, us, and, and tell you we should support something. Mr. Prevent Mr. me Anchia, one you example. Yield. Present me one example. I've got one for you. Well, Mr. Anchia, do you yield? I yield for question. He yield. This one will come from a, uh, a different state, but one very, very conservative. Are you familiar with Justice Roy Moore, the Ten Commandments judge out of Alabama? I have read news articles about him. Were you so familiar? Generally, so, generally, he, so generally familiar. Did you know that he was removed from the bench for critis, criticizing the Obergefell decision and telling other judges to ignore it? I believe that is not the re reason he was removed from the bench. I believe that is an incorrect characterization of why he was removed. I think he abdicated his responsibility as a judge. Members, he was removed from the bench for his being a conscientious objector. Is that a question? Speeches are given up here, uh, Chairman. Mr. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Dutton, for what purpose? For the gentleman. Mr. Gentleman, you. Thank, thank you. Yes, I do. Thank, thank you, you. Thank Chairman. You. Chairman, let me ask a question. What, what rule is it that you can think of that this would apply to? that currently exist in the state bar rules now? I'm unaware. So there's... And so that's, I, I understand how we have rights right. that are guaranteed by the state and the U.S. Constitution, but in terms of a state bar rule, I think we're writing it here on the House floor. Well, that's my, that's my concern. I, I was trying to sit there, I was trying to think of a rule that the state bar has promulgated that might be even subject to this particular amendment. And I couldn't think of one. I don't uh, know. Uh, Mr. One. Chairman, look, I, I agree with you that I think this is a solution in search of a problem. The proponents of this have not su suggested even one case in the state of Texas where the, the conservative Supreme Court has promulgated any state bar rule that would abridge one's actions as an attorney based on sincerely held religious beliefs just doesn't exist. Well, if it's not about the rule, can you tell me what it's really about? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I do, I do think that it's, it's maybe about exerting some control here on, on the House floor. And I think it's maybe about getting some of you to take votes. I think it's about that. And, and it's really about whether we want to countenance that behavior. And so it's, it's couched as whether or not you happen to be for the Constitution or against the Constitution. And that results in some people taking, I, I assume, taking bad votes. I guess so. Well, I'm not, I, I still try, struggle with trying to put this amendment in the right perspective insofar as the state bar M Mr. promulgating Chairman, rules. Look, you've been here for a while. I'm now in my seventh session. It used to be that when you were advocating for a piece of legislation, you had to actually convince people on the House floor that there was a need for it. You had to come up here with examples. Right. You had to come up here 
gosh, we don't even have an anecdote in front of us with respect to the state of Texas. And what, they, and what the proponents are requiring us to believe is that the justices I just named are somehow going to disregard the Constitution, both federal and state, and promulgate rules that are going to infringe on people's religious liberty. And, and I, that, is a, that is a bridge too far, Mr. Mr. Wordman raised a point order. So. Gentlemen, time's expired. Point order well taken sustained. Thank you, members. Can we take back control of the House floor? Please vote against this amendment.